welcome to the 20 Minute Talk Show. I'm very excited to introduce Mark Cook, president and owner of Boosted Technologies, Inc. And now we've only got 20 minutes and time starts now. Thank you again, Mark, for coming to our show. So tell me about your company. Do you mind elaborating on what you do? What inspired you to start it? Well, um, I have a Jeep, um, and I've loved it for years, and I've been off-roading for a lot of years. And when I bought it, I noticed that I just didn't have the power I needed to make it up the highway. And uh, I wanted to solve that problem, so I started doing some research to find out what different avenues I could go down to add some power to the Jeep. And I found a supercharger on Craigslist uh, made by a gentleman down in Colorado Springs. I tried it and it worked fantastically. I was so impressed with the product that I decided that other people needed to know about these products. So I started telling some friends about them, and they all wanted to purchase them. So I contacted the person I bought it from to see if we could get some more, and he said that he got promoted at his primary job and wasn't going to be selling them anymore. But he put me in touch with a manufacturer, who was a gentleman in the Springs, and I contacted him. And I asked him, could I take this other gentleman's place and start advertising and selling these products for you so we can bring them to all the other people that have Jeeps? And he said that uh, he could only make a couple of them a month. And I wanted to be able to sell more than that because I didn't want to have to turn people down. So I asked him, what's it going to take to make more than a couple a month? And he said he would need quite a bit of money in order to do that. And uh, I said, well, I've been running my IT business for a lot of years. And I think I need something a little bit new and different because uh, my passion for IT uh, kind of flatlined. So I decided I wanted a new project, and this sounded like an avenue that I wanted to pursue. So we talked for a little bit and decided that he could continue on with his passion, which was designing superchargers, and I could take on the business aspect of the company. And together, uh, we could create a bigger business out of the little tiny business that he had. And that's uh, how I got started. In it. Wow. What a great story. How imaginative. Um, that you just took a simple idea and then mm -hmm. uh, starting the business. I mean, what challenges did you have? A lot of challenges. Um, the basics that I figured I would end up having in starting a new business and the financing of it and the time that it would take to build it. Um, I had some challenges in the products initially that had some room for improvement that I wanted to address before I released it to market because I wanted to release every bit of product that I was very proud of. And we talked about the areas that we could improve in the products and we redesigned a lot of them and that took an incredible amount of time and money to do that. But once we got through that round, and started releasing them, we started getting phone call after phone call of happy customers and saw the fruits of our labor. And uh, so I've, in growing the company that quickly with a limited amount of funds without any outside investors, without any loans, and to try to be profitable as quickly as possible in these 11 months that I've had to do it has been quite the challenge, but it's been a lot of fun. Wow, it's fun that you get to pursue the passion, your, your passion. So, so some of the successes, share some of those with us. The biggest successes with this company are improving the product and actually when you envision the product originally and a month later or two months later, you can actually hold what your idea was in your hand and physically look at this finished product is one internal success. And, but the biggest success of all is when the customer calls in later and tells you how much they appreciate your product and how much your product has made them fall back in love with their Jeep again. And that's huge when someone realizes that the money that they put into something, which they earn from their hard work, results in, in appreciation uh, above and beyond uh, what their uh, money costs. So. Love it. Wow. So, okay, speaking of clients, um, you had to build a 
a strong customer base. How did that get built? Um, contacted previous customers to get some feedback from them and decided that the current customers and current market, everyone is, of course, using social media and newer methods of uh, contacting companies and researching companies. So I used my IT background, uh, knowing websites and social media, and I used all that knowledge that I had already. Um, I combined it and designed uh, some new website, uh, some new marketing, utilizing a lot of social media as well, and doing some new and different things that our competitors aren't doing uh, because of all the red tape they've got in the big companies and maybe they don't have these ideas. Um, so I've taken all that knowledge and done some stuff that's kind of out of the box. One of the examples wow. um, I'll give you quickly is yesterday we went to Bandemir Speedway and I invited a customer, or not a customer, a potential customer, that has a stock Jeep and I invited him with his stock Jeep to race against my supercharged Jeep. So we took some video of that run last night, in fact, all the way down the drag strip. And then we went ahead and combined that video and posted it on Facebook yesterday so potential customers could actually see a stock vehicle right next to a supercharged vehicle run down the drag strip and see what the difference is. So it's a little bit more in their face rather than someone just trying to tell them how good a product really is. Wow, amazing. What a great example of um, a wonderful marketing strategy that you'd use to gain your consumer. Um, so what failures did you have during this process of starting your business? Biggest one was being disappointed by the relationships we had with companies that we depended on and them failing to meet the expectations that they set for us and which in turn caused challenges for us to meet the expectations that our customers had uh, as well in us. So the domino effect was very difficult. So finding the right set of vendors to work with, the right partners and the right small businesses to work with has been a challenge. But I don't want to outsource anything. I want to keep everything in, not only in the US, but I want to keep everything local. And I want to help other small businesses in the area strive being our partners as well. And so putting that team together has been quite the challenge, but it has worked out very well, and we have really some amazing components, team members in our company now. Wow, wonderful. Well, speaking of team, I know you have to have an amazing team. How did you get that? How did you gather your team? Luckily, the individual that I, in, in at the beginning, purchased all the assets from that was making the superchargers originally is brilliant. Um, he's an uh, older gentleman uh, in his 70s. He's been in the automotive industry for a long time. Um, brilliant, brilliant individual. And so being able to work with him and learn from him has been really incredible. And he's got a friend of his that has worked with him for a lot of years that was more than happy to continue contracting once I started this company. Um, and he's the hardest working, most honest, dependable person I've ever had the luck to work with. So those two have been really incredible. And then our latest uh, member of our team is a good friend of mine from School of Mines that I went to school with. At. And I've known him for many, many years. Uh, brilliant, honest, hard working, uh, and it's just a, he's an engineer, PhD. Uh, it's been great to be able to work with all these intelligent people. In addition to that, one of my closest friends uh, and all succeed together has been great. Wonderful. So how did you build the relationship with all these people? Well, originally I had, because I purchased the assets from the first, for, first person, he was already there and he had already uh, known his friend that was helping him out. And then I had already known my friend from college. So we all came together and talked about where we wanted to go and decided that if we all want to get to this one place, uh, we all need to work together and help each other, uh, push each other up and, and make this happen. So 
it's been some challenges getting to know each other in different working styles and then combine those working styles uh, to benefit everyone. That's true. You want to make it work out and benefit everybody involved. Uh, do you have any competitors that you, competitors you, what makes you different from some of your other competitors? We're innovative. Uh, we can move pretty quickly because we are a smaller company. Um, the biggest difference, I would say, is that I have a passion for Jeeps in general and off-roading, and I am an avid off-roader and camper, and I use the product. I use the product on my vehicles. Um, I don't know if a lot of companies and owners of companies can say that they use and rely on the product their company makes in their everyday life, and I do. So it's, this is just an addition to my existing passion of Jeeps. So now I get to share that passion in different ways with all the people that I would normally hang out with anyway uh, and help the entire Jeeping community. So would you actually expand into another line of vehicle or would you stay strictly with just the Jeeps in the future? Right now I want to make sure that we really perfect what we've got and I don't want to spread ourselves too thin, which a lot of companies I see do, and then their quality drops off, and I don't want to be that type of company. I, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to make a great product and make people happy with what they've got. That's my first and foremost goal in this. And if I can make a living at it at the same time, I want to be able to do that. And of course, I want the people that work so hard with me to be able to make a living as well, because that's what it's all about. It can't all be sacrifice. And so if we've got that, um, I'm going to make everything we've got right now perfect. And then, yes, if we do have some time, and we'll start looking at other avenues, other areas that need us in the industry. I would like to be there for them. Nice. That is true. Wow. So are there any big mistakes that you've made that you want to share that you've learned from? I don't know if anything I would call a mistake. I'd say everything is an opportunity to learn. Um, so I can't really think of any big mistakes we've had. We've had some uh, product issues with that f made by some vendors that we rely on, and we are working through those because ultimately what matters is the end product, and we're there to make sure that the end product is good for our customers. Um, but again, that was out of our control, out of our hands. So I can't really think of any mistakes, just some learning. That's true. Everything is a learning opportunity, not necessarily a mistake. I agree. So who are your role models? Who's inspired you? Um, in my IT company that I've had for decades, uh, I've run into some wealthy and successful people that I am happy to be able to call my clients and watching them and learning from them for these decades has been, uh, there have been some huge role models there. So I've been able to leverage what I've learned from them in this business. And another role model in this business is the gentleman that actually does the design of the superchargers. Um, he's, uh, he's so brilliant and I love watching him and trying to learn how he does what he does. And he's been a, an amazing role model as far as design and engineering of the parts and equipment that we sell. Nice. So for the next five years, what are your plans? For your business in particular? For the business? I want to grow from a small company into a medium-sized company where we are comfortable and we're not under any stress and right now we're selling product faster than we can make it. So that's a little bit stressful for us. So I'd like to get to a point where we can keep up with the demand a little bit better. And instead of taking a month to send something out or a couple of weeks to send something out, we can get something sent out within a couple of days for a customer. So that's one thing I'd like to do in the next five years. I'd like to get to a point toward the end of the five years where we can start really becoming more entwined with the community and do some more community outreach 
if I could take some of the Jeep events that we do, and we try to go to many public Jeep events and gatherings, I'd like to start being able to do some stuff charity-wise. Uh, you know, right now we're just able to start offering some discounts for police and law enforcement and military. I'd like to be able to expand that a little bit to help and show our appreci appreciation for all the people that uh, are there to support us as Americans as well and as a small business. Wow, wonderful. That's a great plan. I imagine you'll probably grow all over the United States, uh, just outside, even beyond outside of Denver. So, so what do you do besides work? What do you do outside of that for enjoyment? That's a good question. Uh, right now, with running uh, two businesses, uh, it's been a challenge to find some free time, and a very big challenge. So recently, I haven't done a whole lot outside of work. Um, when I'm not working, I do go camping a lot. I do a lot of four-wheeling. I love racing cars. Um, I love anything with performance, anything that goes fast. I've dabbled in a little bit of skydiving. So I've got a lot of plans for enjoying some free time when I have some and things slow down a little bit. But right now, I am really enjoying the ride that I'm on. Oh, skydiving has to be fun. I'm actually, you, I will be going, I want to go skydiving this weekend. That sounds like it would be a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. It is uh, something that you can't, no one can describe to you the feeling until you experience it. Yeah, true. Experience is important. So let me ask you. Okay, so we have about three minutes left. Okay, so some of the challenges you face, like, for instance, investment. What were some of the challenges there? I mean, I understand that you had to get investment, but how did you raise the money? How did you raise the capital for your team? Um, I actually didn't raise any of it. What I did is I took my life savings and I said, I'm going to take a big chance because my mama has always told me that you got to stretch to grow and sometimes you got to take chances in life to have amazing things. So I took a big leap of faith. I took my entire savings and I invested all of it into this company as an all or nothing. Uh, did you have a lot of support from your family, or was it kind of stressful? I mean, my family has always like? supported me in uh, my endeavors. Um, financially, I refuse to take any support because I am too prideful and uh, I want to do this on my own. And that's why I wasn't able or wanting to take any loans from banks or anyone else. I wanted to make sure I did this all on my own accord, uh, just for my own personal satisfaction. So how do you stay confident and to be able to keep yourself going? Well, there isn't any other option. I love doing what I do. And uh, people that accomplish a lot in life um, put the effort in, put the requisite effort in. So I do exactly the same thing. There's just no, no option to stop. Uh, you just push forward. That's true. OK. Uh, so we have 30 seconds left. So let me see. If you could change your career, what would you do? Would you do anything differently? If I could find some way to be in a philanthropy position, um, I would love to be able to give back as much as I could and help communities, help our children as much as possible. Um, unfortunately, I have to work and make a living. But at some point in my future, I will be devoting most all of my time to making a permanent, long-lasting impression and improvement to our world. That's great. Okay, so we've got five seconds left. So uh, summarize yourself in one sentence, if you could. Passionate, um, dependable, and tenacious. Great. 
Okay, 30 seconds left. Um, do you have any advice for the young entrepreneurs out there starting their businesses? Never give up. Put the effort into it. Nothing comes for free, nothing comes easy. You have to work for it. And if you work for it and you're passionate, you can succeed. Anyone can. Great. Great advice. Thank you for coming again to our show. And time is up. Thank you. Thank you so much.